Hey guys, this is uh, Andy here, and today is going to be my pretty late uh, video talking about some of the games in 2019 that were uh, impressionable, I guess we'll say. So we're going to be talking about the best of the best games, um, some honorable mention games that I want to put um, somewhere, but I don't want to put at the top for various reasons. I'll probably talk about the reason why during it. And then, of course, some bottom barrel games. So, keep in mind, this is obviously just all my own opinion, and this is not really, like, reviews of the game, so we're not gonna go super in-depth about it. But I wanted to make a video like this because I've actually been, this is the first year I've been keeping track of all the games that I've actually played, um, over the course of the year in a list of, a like, a Google Docs. And I wanted to make use of it somehow, so I decided to make a video talking about some of these games that were, you know, something. Hopefully good, but not all of them are that way. So, without, uh, you know, getting too much into the introduction, let's get right into it. Alright, so starting off with the, the good games of the list, we have uh, Cat Quest 2, which is a sequel to the first game. Uh, this is like a top-down action RPG. I kind of originally got this game because it was like, sort of like... It kind of reminded me of like Secret of Mana or something like that, but obviously Secret of Mana is super janky. Uh, I like that game a lot though, anyways, frankly. But that's going off topic. And yeah, as far as like comparing this game to the first game, I says it's like kind of like a weirdly a strictly better version of the game, which is kind of weird to say because it's already like really simple. But yeah, it's it, you know it's got a lot of the same elements that make the first game fun. It's got all that cool like side questing stuff. You constantly get it, find equipment and treasure, and you're constantly getting stronger via level ups or upgrading your magic. That feeling is always fun. And now it's a in a co-op environment. If you still desire, you can play with another pal of yours, and you can explore like a whole new set of people and kingdom with the dogs being in the game now uh, overall it's just like really fun simple it doesn't overstay its welcome which i think is a really big part of the game and it has some like you know it, it, it it's one of those games where like you know you're constantly getting stronger and you feel good but it doesn't uh take too long uh and yeah overall i think it's a pretty fun little game uh uh could, apparently they're making a third one so uh shout out to them and we'll see where it goes from there it's really funny leaving <laughs> Nintendo Switch opening for a lot of days. These aren't necessarily the consoles that I played them on. These are just trailers that I could find instantly on like YouTube or something. But <laughs> getting back to the point, this is a Wuppo. Uh, let me tell you, when I played this game, uh, and when it comes to describing this game, I don't really know how to, honestly. This is just like a really, really strange experience. It's like, you know, one moment I'm like platforming and questing, and then there's boss fighting, and there's some like real-time stuff, and... It's very, very bizarre. Almost like overly bizarre, but oh, that's a lot of the charm for it, for sure. It's just how strange it is and what you're doing and like the events that go on, the progression of the game. It's. It, by the end of the game, I was just like, wow, that was such a strangely unique experience. That was a lot of fun, you know? And it's like, you know, another game that's super cute to look at. Uh. There's just a lot going on in it, um, you know, you're getting lost, but you're figuring things out, and just truly, uh, I know, a very, very unique game that I think is just the right amount of strangeness and weirdness that I think is worth looking into for sure. Also, there's a definitive edition now, so have fun with that, I guess. Yay. Alright, this is one hell of a last minute addition to my games list. I actually played this game just, like this weekend so very very last minute area end of the year but man oh man was it worth it this is a short hike and let me tell you something my favorite uh gamecube game of all time is like chibi robo i really like the concept of the games we kind of just wander around and explore you know uh explore places but also help out people do side quests find secrets things like that you know it's one of the reasons why you know I didn't talk about it, but that's why I like the things you do in Wuppo. And this game really speaks to me a lot in that regard. It's just a super chill experience. The music really makes the game super atmospheric. You can just walk around and wander and, you know, do cool stuff. Help out the peoples, find out some secrets, you know, explore the world. It's great, honestly. It's very, very short, as the name uh, would experience... Uh, words as the name suggests and it can be just but you can really make that as long or as short as you want it to be just about how much you just want to like chill and immerse it all in i highly recommend a short hike it was a uh, very very uh good game also uh games q too <laughs> there might be a running theme going on i don't know what you're talking about 
in the weirdest instance where I bought the game because the trailer was like, you know, the gameplay looks fun and you ended up staying for the story? <laughs> Question mark? This is Donut County, which I guess the game most people compare it to is sort of like a Katamari Damacy. You're a hole and you create havoc and destruction in your hole. And what? But honestly, the gameplay is sort of like really... It's kind of eh, there's like, eh, that's fun enough, you know, you're, you're a hole, it's fun, it's, it's a cool, weird thing, you just suck things up, you know, that's fun. Um, there are like some minor puzzles and things like that, but overall, the game is actually more amusing than expected, just by like the story and the characters and what's going on in it. So, <laughs> that's like, that was a really big surprise. At the end of the day, I was just like, wow, I'm actually like super immersed in what the hell is going on, it's f actually funny and amusing. It's got even with all strange humor and you know the game part of you being a hole is enough to just tide you along to see what else is going on in the world so yeah donut county it's good shit all right so when i went into this game actually a lot of people told me it was like eh, it's whatever it's like uh, i don't it's like okay i guess like that so i kind of went into it with like a meh expectation i'll be like ah, i'll enjoy for what it is but i know i've always kind of been interested in this game whenever it was announced and I hadn't played it yet so i went in and i played it and honestly it was a lot of fucking fun actually i really like uh, you know, I'm a simple person. If your character is fun to control, then I'm good with there. And there's a, your character has like a lot of cool moves that use. Uh, you and Lily both have their own like kind of like set of moves that show off their like, things. Like there's a lot of cool interactions with that. You could say. I know I'm kind of phrasing this kind of weirdly, but it's cool that they're both like much more unique than say uh, some other people that I actually end up talking about in this video. Strangely enough, I like that game a lot too. Those games a lot too. So yeah, I just played this and I was just overly pleasantly surprised and I enjoyed it so much. I actually own this game on two different consoles and I've beaten them both. I own this game on Steam and on Switch. Ironically, not the PS4 version, haha. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is probably honestly my favorite collectathon that I've played. Uh, it's just like, you know, the modernness of it, just the controls being really good, and you know... <laughs> I don't remember the names of all the music people, sorry, but David Wise and Grand Coco, but yeah, they're awesome. So, somehow in the same year of me playing Ukulele, they somehow made a sequel to the game, uh, which is uh, Ukulele in the Impossible Lair, which I must say, also, uh, I also like DKC style games, um, you know, 1, 2, and 3, and uh, Return to Tropical Freeze. Uh, I actually haven't beaten the SNES game, haha, <laughs> I'm bad. But I definitely have played Return to Tropical Freeze and beaten them both. I think Tropical Freeze is a really, really good platformer. Returns is not bad, it just didn't age very well, unfortunately. Uh, man, when I played this, I'm just like, yeah, it feels like, it feels like those, you know? You got the rolling and jumping off uh, the air. But honestly, <laughs> I kind of like the overworld aspects maybe a bit too much of the game actually. It's just like, I, like I said, I really like exploring and you know, doing like weird like side questy things, figuring out secrets, so that kind of weird overworld aspect to me, it, it speaks a lot. So maybe uh, you can make a game just based around that and I'll be happy. <laughs> so I mean that's kind of the reasons why I like collectathons as well, you know. So there's that. But honestly, this game uh, had really fun um, level design in it, especially um, the namesake of the game, the Impossible Lair. I really, uh, it's really cool that we live in a, like a platforming era now, where there's a lot of like things that are like super un, well, I'm not gonna say unfair. Well, kind of. Eh, it's not the right accurate word, but like things that are very, very difficult, but they're very fair about it, you know. So um, the Impossible Lair, I think this game is really well designed. It's probably one of my favorite like last levels you could say of a, of a platforming game. It's a lot of fun to do, and it feels really good when you're doing it and things like that. Um, so yeah, this was a, like a pleasant surprise. Game kind of came out of nowhere, but man, was it awesome! So I kind of put these both two together because I didn't really want to put them in separate places. But that's Ukulele and its sequel, Ukulele and Impossible Lair. Some people will know, probably know, that uh, I was recording this game on my channel, Blind Playthrough, and I stopped recording it after a while. So did I stop recording it because I didn't like it? No, I stopped recording it because I liked it, actually. I liked this game a lot, and I was just like, man, I just want to play the game on my own, you know? I'm a little tired of, like, just recording this game and worrying about, like, looking like a jackass, and I want to look at my inventory and do all this, like, side stuff, like, cooking on my own time and things like that. And I just stopped recording and just started playing on my own time, so where, you know... Cause I have a lot more free time to just play something rather than record without like all the hassle of being around uh, people who will be bothered by me talking out loud all the time and things like that. And let me tell you, this game fucking owned, man. It was so much damn fun. I really like just 
Character interaction in a video game in general is one of my biggest thing when all the characters just like talk to each other, maybe bicker with one each other, and things like that. It's super fun to see it. I just I just constantly was just going around like tattling and all the things and seeing all that. And the game itself as an RPG is the turn based RPG is pretty fun. There's just like a lot of nuances to the strategies that you can do in the battle. Um, it's got a, quite a bit of challenge to the game. There's tons of uh, cool characters and places to explore, you know, some like, some secret stuff. There's a lot of boss fights in the game actually, which I think is really cool when you're, uh, because uh, if your game, normally like in RPGs, random battles are kind of like, eh, whatever, well, not random, I guess nowadays, but you know, the, your everyday enemy encounters are like, whatever, but I really think boss fights are, when you're, if your game has good mechanics, that's where they really get a shine, and I think, um, in this game, it really did get a shine in a lot of the cool boss fights that happen in the game. So, this game was a really, really damn fun um, RPG in the vein of the old, the old Paper Mario, and damn, it was good. So back when this game came out, I think it was the year 2016, I played this game for 5 hours and then I put it down. To me, it was just not like the kind of roguelike fix I wanted, I didn't feel like it was like the super like randomness, you get the oh god run kind of thing that I was like wanting, and I was like eh, whatever. But earlier uh, this year, I think it was like early, uh, or I think it was late 2018 that I actually picked up this game again and started playing it, uh, I don't remember. But I played it, picked it up again, and I was like, wow, this is a lot more fun than I remember. And alongside the various updates they did to make the game more fun, it turns out, um, I probably just, like, my taste of games has just changed over time. And let me tell you, I played the heck out of Into the Gungeon. And whenever I was just at school on my laptop and I didn't know what to do, I would just be, like, looking up stuff about Gungeon, um, being like, what do these items do? What do these synergies do? And I just wanted to, like, know a lot about the game, you know. I owned this game on three different consoles, with 100% on all of them. I own this game on Steam, PS4, and uh, Switch. I actually own the physical version of the PS4 copy, which includes the Ammonomicon. I didn't. I don't own the physical version of the Switch version because it hadn't come out yet, um, and I didn't really want to buy it again on the same console because that's a little weird for you know double, triple dipping kind of thing. But uh, yeah, Into the Gungeon. Honestly, it's just. A super fun top-down uh, twin stick shooter that something that this is the, not a genre game that I typically uh, play I must say it's I don't think I'm much of a shmup kind of guy but when it came to playing Gungeon I was like really addicted to it after a while it's fun it's actiony uh, and surprisingly uh, it's one of my favorite games now which <laughs> this game looks very much not the style of other games on this list does it huh uh, well it do be like that sometimes all right holy heck this game was an incredible experience. This is Wonder Song. It is a musical platformer, I guess, sort of thing. And my god, I was hooked in from the very beginning all the way to the end. Just, you know, it's, it's like a fun, like, it has pretty uh, interesting platforming elements for the most part. There isn't like real platforming you do in the game, which is pretty strange. But the story and the characters absolutely blew me away. The experience of it is insane and you're like haha this is a happy fun little experience and going on and you're like oh wow this is the it hits you hard man let me tell you wonder song the very very uh it was just a huge emotional trip uh, from the beginning to the end you know filled with a lot of happy emotions and a lot of uh other darker deeper emotions you could say <laughs> i don't want to say too much about it because it's pretty insane um but I bought this game like on a whim one day when I saw it, and I played, I beat it, I beat like the whole 10 hours of it in one night. I was hooked. It is a very, very strong emotional experience in a platformer, which is a genre that I like. So hey, turns out everything's pretty cool in the world. So this game really set the pace for me, I think, this year for video games. This was, I played this game in January, and it kind of is the reason why I delved into a lot of like indie games more than usual this year. This game really set the pace for me. So I don't think I've ever cried at a video game, and I don't think I've ever cried so much at a video game. This is Rakuen, made by Laura Shikihara. You might know her because she does the soundtrack for things like... Uh, Plants vs Zombies and To The Moon and this game is a lot in the style of a lot of like To The Moon which is it's a RPG maker game um, that's super story driven and it just 
it really represents to me why I fucking love video games so much. It's just a super simple game. It's RPG Maker. It's just a top-down RPG. But the story is amazing about it. It's like, you legitimately just like, care about a lot of these characters. You want to know what's going on in their lives. And you're figuring out this cool, crazy world. Oh my god. I, I really don't know what to say. It, it was such... Uh, a crazy trip. I beat the game and I was like crying the whole time when I was beating the game and I was I couldn't even go to sleep that night like cuz I ever just think about the game and I would just start losing my breath and start crying again. I was crying for like more than over 30 minutes after I beat the game. Yeah, on, on the list of emotional experiences I've been on, Rockland is definitely at the top and I if you're really into like story based games, uh, I, I, I can't I can't stress like how much that I think Rockland owns man. Uh, just the uh, one of the strongest emotional experiences I think I've played in a game. It's not like this is not like a genre I typically kind of play. Um, but yeah, these games are good, and it reminds me that I still need to play uh some other stuff that I on my wish list, like freaking <laughs> the To the Moon sequels that I haven't gone around to playing in Night in the Woods. Uh, maybe next year. But Rockwind, man, holy hell, it's good. Alright, it's time to end up this, uh, like, I guess this ended up being a top 10 list somehow. <laughs> I don't really know how that happened. If you want to count ukulele and things, but, but it's time to end uh, this list of my top 10 favorite games of the year with what is probably actually now one of my favorite games ever. Actually, I love Heartbeat, it turns out. When I play this game, it's just like, this game was just made for me, frankly. It's got, uh, the plot is about, like, you know, like a master familiar type system with a lot of, like, monsters and things like that and connections uh man it's it's so good there's so much character interaction in this game you're looking for with all the different characters there's so much cool dialogue it's funny it's witty and it's, strangely the plot is actually quite good the game is actually a lot more deep than you would expect for this kind of style of game the art style is really cool it's like sort of like anime -ish, but it's very clean and like this alongside rock Band is like really just goes to, you know these are just rpg maker games man they're just made by like you know a few amount of like less than 10 people like <laughs> it's like but it's 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 so good i think like the game has like just like the right amount of strategy in it for what you can do in the rpg battle you know, all the characters have like very much like roles very much like traditional roles you feel like like this guy has a healer this guy you know like a more of like a mage and things like that you know that kind of standard stuff which i think uh but, you know, with all the different characters, they're all, a lot of them are very memorable in their own ways. There's tons of, like, side quests and tons of character interaction, like I said. Like, a lot of stuff you do in the game, you like, you see these characters, you'll see them again in the future. It really just reminds me of, like, a much more, like, fantasy, Earthbound Mother kind of style game. I know fantasy mother is kind of a dumb thing to say, because it's already, that's already fantasy, but you get the idea. More, like, magical kind of thing. There's, a uh, tons of side quests in the game. Uh, overall, it's just like a damn good JRPG, uh, and I, I really actually want to play it on my channel at one point in time. Uh, this is like another one of those games that I, I constantly like think about a lot. I listen to the soundtrack like a lot of times when I go out. It's freaking heartbeat, and it's it's so good. I I love this game, man. Alright, so now we're going to get into what I'm going to call the honorable mentions kind of list. These are games that are good that I didn't even put on my like top 10 apparently for uh, just various reasons i'll probably talk about the reasons why and for these this game this, these games in particular the main reason why i don't want to put them in my top 10 is because it's not necessarily like newer <laughs> so this is uh actually i in order i really didn't know what to use for a video so this is actually the vhs thing for banjo kazooie if you know what that is which is pretty sweet so i've always been a big fan of the banjo kazooie games if you look in like i don't know my middle school portfolio thing i actually have like an image of banjo kazooie in it but i've never actually been any of the games before uh, besides brunchy's revenge which i'll also talk about in a second so um I actually started playing this game again because, or started playing Benzo. I wanted to play Benzo 2 specifically because, uh, ye old speedrunner slash streamer Spike Vegeta was, uh, playing the game on his, uh, channel. And I was like, oh, I really want to play Benzo 2 again, see if I beat it. But in order to play that, I probably should actually beat Benzo Kazooie first, haha. <laughs> so I played it, and I beat it. 
And then I played Brandon Tui, and I beat that. And let me tell you, these games are fun. You know, they're some of the classic collectathon kind of style games with your, your witty humor. There's not that much witty humor in the first game because there's not as much dialogue. And two, uh, two you people might know kind of goes off more into the deep end because that's when Rare is all like, haha, we're Rare by the way. We have dirty minds. <laughs> Super special. But yeah, I love both uh, Banjo Kazooie and Tui quite a lot. Um, for different reasons, for sure. Kazooie is a more of a standard, simpler kind of style, and Tui is like massive, kind of like almost Castlevania, Metroidvania kind of style. All the worlds like connect with each other. Those two kind of things. Um, I still think about why I like Tui more just because Kazooie dying in the first game sucked, stupid, dumb, and all that. But yeah, I'm, I'm actually really happy to have beaten both these games first time this year, and I actually enjoyed them so much that I actually went and bought the physical cartridges of them uh, at a convention and then displayed them at my friend's house afterwards, because um, he owns an Ancestor 4 and I don't, and that was a lot of fun, I got to show him those games. And Super cool, and as far as uh, the GBA game is concerned, Grunty's Revenge, Grunty's Revenge is honestly a good game, <laughs> it turns out. When I play it, you're just like, that's the only Advanced Kazooie game I had been before this, and when I play it now, I still, I'd say honestly it ages pretty well for what it is, you know, it's like just a simple ass GBA game, uh, it's not trying to be like overly amazing, anything like that, or overly complicated, it's on a GBA, you know, there's not much to say about it. That, uh, that hardware is not overly powerful, but it's it's fun. It honestly does feel like a handheld, just like Banjo Kazooie game. You know, it's like what the heck? It's it's good. So overall, um, I'm happy to have played uh, the series and beaten it finally. Um, it's it's really strange to think about actually. Mostly most of the games when I play, uh, I tend to play games like uh, what. Uh, I played. I know about the Mother series because of Smash, and I played those games because I was like, "Oh, Ness is super cool. Lucas is a super cool character, and like that." I played uh, Xenoblade because Soul got put in Smash. So it's really funny to me for be like, "Hey, uh, I played these games, and then they got announced in Smash." Usually, it's the other way around. But yeah, not too much to say about this. It's a uh, the Banjo series. It's great. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll get more games. I don't know. Probably not. I don't know what the hell Rare is doing, uh, or rather Microsoft is doing. Addy K. This game doesn't make it on the list for the same reason that Banjo series doesn't make it on the list. Uh, it's a bit older, and also I've actually beaten this game before many, many, many times. <laughs> but hey, replaying of games I also put on that games list here, and let me tell you, Diddy Kong Racing is probably still my not only my favorite racing game of all time, uh, maybe. Mm, it's hard to say, actually, but this is definitely my favorite N64 game of all time. Diddy Kong Racing is just like. It's it's weird to say that like I like this game a lot because it has like a story adventure mode in it. What the hell? Who cares about a story adventure mode in a racing game? But let me tell you, Diddy Kong Racing is super fun as a result of that. Actually, it's got that overworld. And there's like some there's, like some small secrets in the overworld, but I've always like really enjoyed that part. You know, I've been talking about that palm mode all video. And uh, this game's controls. This game ages a lot better than Mario Kart 64. I must say, Mario Kart 64 I do not like anymore. But this game's controls are really fun to play um the power-ups are like eh, okay but a lot of levels and the music is super duper good um the the challenging the challenge of the game is actually it's it's quite it's fairly challenging silver coins are pretty hard um the boss fights are actually pretty challenging in the story mode in that part and probably one of my favorite parts of the story mode is the co-op feature that you can have with the codes i miss codes in computer games by the way it's like <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It's it's fun and silly. Um, so yeah, the adventure mode. By the way, if you have never watched this VHS video, I highly recommend watching it. Um, this one is probably uh, the wacky. This one and the Star Fox 64 one. If you ever know what I watched, the Magic Kazooie one is actually like the most informative, normal one. But let me tell you, uh, yeah, I, I played this game um, both this this year. I played both the Adventure One and Adventure Two. Adventure Two is like a mirror mode, which is also harder. Um, higher difficulty, uh, especially the silver coin locations are pretty dumb. And then I actually played Adventure 2 again on my on my friend's the four because he also really likes Diddy Kong Racing. And man, I can never get enough of this game. Frankly, I will probably play this game like maybe I'll play this game again this year. Frankly, in the year 2020, because man, Diddy Kong Racing it owns. 
So I have a playthrough of this game on my channel. Um, I kind of did it on a whim because I thought it'd be fun to do for like a Halloween kind of thing. I thought it'd be cute and all that because I knew about the game. But let me tell you, you have no idea how badly I want to go back and play and record through the game again, knowing a lot more about the game and about the series in general. Because I stumble around and get super lost in that game a lot. And I'm like, holy heck. But let me tell you, Break Me Horse Show, this series, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's I uh, so um I actually just, like was talking about this game series a lot with my uh friend and he actually went out and told me that you can watch the whole series actually on YouTube there are a lot of people that have uploaded it and after I went out and watched the whole series on YouTube let me tell you this series is fucking awesome man uh, I think this game actually really encapsulates a lot of like the series just like a lot of what its own takes in uh kind of like interpretations of what happens in the show because a lot of, some of the things don't translate well from the show to the game um, as well as the fact that in the US version specifically a lot of the voice actors aren't the same because you know voice acting in America haha <laughs> suck a lot but the game is really fun uh, you know it's like there's a sneaking it's like light sneaking light horror um, but really, the highlight for me is if you ever go and watch the show afterwards, the show, like, I think the show legitimately would be, like, disturbing to me had I not played the game ahead of time. But <laughs> after knowing what I was getting into, cartoon horror, haha, <laughs> I forgot to call it that. After I knew what I was getting into when I watched the show, I was enjoying myself, like, the whole fucking time. It was so amusing and interesting. Uh, and I really want to play the game again on my channel just to be like, yeah, I, I just know a lot more of what's happening. Gregory's the boy, by the way. This game, and actually, uh, Gregory Horse Show, now that I mentioned, think about it. I didn't say why they didn't make it into the honorable list. They're mostly just lower on the list, that's about it, really. Even though I've never played them before. So, when I bought this game, I was like, oh, maybe I'll play it because it's like an RPG, it'll be fun, and things like that. Um, this is the longest five minutes. This is very much a Nippon Ichi software kind of game, let me tell you. It has that flair. This, it's pretty tropey and stereotypically, not as much as. Some other games that I'm not going to talk about. <laughs> anime. What the fuck? But let me tell you, when I played this game, I was like, yeah, okay, this is like really simple. It's like whatever. It, this game is honestly more of a visual novel than an RPG. But as far as uh, this weird visual novel, simple RPG hybrid is concerned, honestly, the characters are, and the plot is interesting enough that I was like, by the end of the game, I was just like, yeah, that was that was cool. You're really interested in the progression of what's going on in these damn five minutes, you know? What the hell is going on? I want to know what... You, you're playing the game because you're just like, Oh yeah, I want to know. I want to keep knowing what's going on. And the game deals a lot with, like, memories, which I think is a really important part of us as, like, human beings with our identity. So the overall theme of the game is quite good, and the game itself is, like, eh, it's, it's serviceable. This game does not make the cut because I am a dumb human being and I am too small brained in order to beat it. So, yeah. I This is Baba is You. I bought this game and I played it for like a long time without stopping and then I realized I am too stupid and cannot figure any of the stuff out. But as far as puzzle games is concerned, this one is a damn good one that I would recommend if you want to live the struggle. It starts out super simple and this game gets difficult fast. Of what all the possibilities you can do with all the different combinations. It's basically like a Lolo, images of Lolo game on uh, a lot of crack. But let me tell you, there's just so many different mechanics that can happen. There's just a lot of crazy combinations. Uh, it's just, it's, it's very much Galaxy Brain puzzle game. And well, uh, yeah, it's honestly one of the best puzzle games I've ever played, but I don't really play it that much anymore because I, I can't do it. Papa is you. It's uh, it's good. This is another game that doesn't make the cut because I've played it before, technically. <laughs> so this is Tales of Vesperia, the definitive edition that came out this year. And when I was playing this game again, let me tell you, I was just like, wow, you know, Tales of Vesperia honestly might be one of my favorite Tales games. You know, I was like, I was like, I always liked this game a lot, and I was like, oh yeah. And I played it again, and I'm like, yeah, Vesperia honestly owns. This is probably one of the last like classic style Tales games, you could say, um, compared to a lot of the newer ones, which play a lot differently, you could say. Um, this one has a more standard, like, simple, like, attack, 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 chains and stuff. Um, this game is <laughs> has got a lot of very, very OP stuff in it, which makes uh, playing your characters uh, really fun. There's a lot more characters in this game than a lot of newer Tales games, which is pretty cool. Um, 
Um, unfortunately, uh, as far as localization is concerned of this, since this game is quite old at this point, uh, and the PSD, like, the, Jap the PSD version, the J version, they never make it over stateside, it means that, um, as far as voice acting is concerned for the English version, I played this game on Japanese, because this game is just not fully voiced in English, or at least not voiced with the same voice actors as before, because like I said, it's been a long time. Which is an issue I also have with, uh, the Tales of Symphonia, uh, remaster. It's kind of unfortunate, but yeah, the game is pretty old. Xbox 360! Uh -huh. uh, I have some fun stories about that too, but we'll save that for another time. But Tales of Vesperia is probably still in my favorite, like, my top three favorite Tales games for sure. Look, uh, the reason why this game should be in the top ten played <laughs> of my favorite games, uh, frankly, and with, uh, like, how much I love it. But it kind of came out last year, and I played a bulk of my hours of it last year, so, yeah, there, there's really not any reason for it to be there. But this is Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate for the Switch, the Switch version. Uh, this version came out stateside last year, I want to say, um, in English, after, you know, being in Japan for forever, because, haha, <laughs> uh, the West in Monster Hunter is a, a thing that exists, even though it's not supposed to be, but Capcom continues to make it a thing, I don't really know why. This is my favorite Monster Hunter game, like, hands down. When originally, when Generations was announced, I was, like, pretty iffy about, uh, uh, styles and Hunter Arts, but they really like nailed it because they just let you have play the game in so many different play styles. Like every time I talk to a person, they're just like, "Oh yeah, I play this weapon with this hunter arts and this style," and it's always different. There's so many different ways to express yourself playing this game, which is pretty fucking cool for Monster Hunter. That's something I don't think I, I didn't think I ever want, but man, is it amazing! I really love that kind of like customization aspect of just being able to express yourself, do just your gameplay rather right? than other things, and that's. Pretty fucking awesome. It's one of the reasons why like people try to play like certain characters in like fighting games and things like that. But with these weapons and you know, it's great. There's so many cool, unique monsters to hunt in this game. It's like I think it's like the most monsters of any game. And there's like the many. There are very little variations between monsters. Like you know, like subtypes of monsters, which helps the each monster feel a bit more unique as well. Because you know you're like eh, things like Green Naga or like whatever Kongalog, Emerald Kongalog, you're like, eh, whatever, but there's so many different monsters in this game, it's super cool, it's, it's still, it, it's a great monster in the game, it's my, it's my favorite, for sure. This game doesn't make it on the list because I am a lazy jackass who actually needs to go and play it more, because I need it. This is Ring Fit Adventure, and I've always been fascinated by the idea of playing, uh, Video games to help you exercise, I've actually written a paper on it, actually, it's one of the reasons why I like to play, uh, uh, Dance Dance Revolution, and I was uh, obsessed with like Wii Fit Adventure. Um, but unfortunately, as with all exercise in the world, I am bad at keeping up with daily routines. But as far as what I want out of a video game that helps you exercise while also being fun and what you're doing, Ring Fit Adventure hits it pretty damn uh, hard. I have never seen that uh, power up in the game. Holy fuck, I need to play this more. I played this game for like 20 hours, dude. Someone please help me with routine and daily stuff because I cannot do that in life at all. What the heck? I had a, a blast playing this game when I was playing it. It was I was playing it like every day. I look forward to playing it, and oh God, I, I need the exercise, guys. Someone please help me with the. Uh, someone please drag. Oh, someone please come over to my house like every day and just force me to play Ring of Adventure because I need the exercise so fucking bad, guys. It's like it's it's a fucking RPG. Come on, I, you don't you love JRPGs, dude? What is wrong with me sometimes? Please help me, guys. Ring for Adventure. The peripheral actually works pretty fucking well. I'm honestly surprised uh, by how much uh, we've advanced as far as uh, various uh, motion technology has gone from the Wii to the Wii U and things like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I highly recommend uh, Ring Fit Adventure as it, but you know, whenever I get into this thing as a long term thing, we will, we will put this on my top 10 list, but so, so, someone please help me with routine based things. I, Spontaneity cannot, uh, does not go so far when it comes to exercise. I need to be in shape, damn it. I need to live a healthy lifestyle. Fuck me. This is another game that doesn't make it on the list because I've played it and been it before. Uh, this is Monster Boy and the Curse Kingdom, and I have a playthrough of it on my channel, actually. So, I don't really know how I found out about Wonder Boy series, but, um, I've probably talked about it before, but I really like, uh, all the Wonder Boy games that I've played, which is Dragon's Trap, uh, Wonder Boy and Monster World was probably my favorite besides this uh, and Monster World 4. 
Um, and I don't know, I really, it, it, this is just a genre I like, it's just platforming with uh, exploring and like kind of like weird secrets, like a lot of hidden stuff, like kind of like, eh, I'm not gonna say like old school kind of gameplay, but as far as uh, this game, I think takes the best parts out of a lot of the those kind of style of Monster Boy games, you know, the different power-ups you have between all the forms of Dragon Trap, which can switch them all between them all at the same time. Um, you got all the cool platforming and secrets. Uh, the dungeons in this game, like the big like areas, are actually like really fun and interesting compared to some of the other games. Uh, uh, yeah, it's honestly just a super fun, solid platformer, uh, platforming platformer games. And in the in it just the art style is very good. It's got very good music, um, very represent. It's just a very like strong love letter to the series, which is not something that I thought I would be saying in the year 2019. Um, considering the series is quite old at this point. So yeah, um, probably one of my favorite games actually, turns out. It's piano. Look, out of all the games that don't need descriptions, this one needs at least one description. As far as like, why it's in the middle and among other things. It's <laughs> fucking Tetris! It's Tetris 99, damn it. Why is there a Tetris 99? Or is there, why is there a Tetris Battle Royale? Why is, why is that a thing? I don't know. But the ultimate question about all of that is why the fuck is it fun? I don't know. There's a lot of reasons why I can say it's fun. It's cool that you're playing as other people, for one. Um, it's sort of like you get a build, you know, playing like en Endless, but you also like get garbage blocks thrown at you. But the garbage blocks don't feel arbitrary, they feel like they're from some other people. The targeting system is actually really well programmed in the game, strangely. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's fucking Tetris. It's addictive as shit. It, I, 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 apparently, it's a, it's, <laughs> apparently it was a good idea, holy fuck! Alright, I'm actually gonna take a moment here to preface um, the f finale of this video. Dumbest finale ever. This is what I'm gonna call the disappointing games list. Uh, I'm not gonna call them bad games because most of the games on this list aren't bad. Some of them are. <laughs> That's gonna be fun. But yeah, these are the games that I just like. When I played them, I was just like, eh, I, I'm more disappointed playing this game than I, th I thought it was gonna be better than this. But I need to take a moment to uh, get ready for some of the stuff. It'll start out tame. And it'll end up in a probably a cesspool. So when I say we're starting a team, I mean it because I actually probably would still be like, hey, you can play the game. It's not like a bad thing. I wouldn't be like against someone playing it. This game is actually the disappointing part of the disappointing list when I played it. I've already talked about other games on this list that are like weird and wacky, kind of like Weppo. And when I played this game, or when I bought this game and started playing it, I kind of wanted it to be like that. It, it looks wacky, it looks like fun, you know, kind of bizarre and all that. And I played it, and honestly, it's just actually pretty underwhelming to play, it turns out. It's like, and eh, the platforming in the game is not as fun. It's not as wacky or bizarre as you would think it would be, strangely. There's a lot of, like, relatively normalness to the game. It's just, like... And some of the, a lot of the side stuff is just not that, like, fun or interesting in the game. Uh, it, 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 it kind of just, like, eh, it's just not much of anything. It's, like, okay. I, and I don't, like, hate it. But at the same time, I was, like, eh, I kind of wanted more when I was at the end of it. I was, like, eh. Yeah, I'm fully aware there's a pretty weird entry to put on the list. This is a Picto Quest, The Cursed Grids. Um, so, I'm actually a pretty big Picross fan. Um, I really like, um... Jupiter makes a lot of Picross games on Nintendo, actually. Um, I really like Picross 3D on DS, probably one of my favorites, but Picross S series on Switch is actually a lot of fun. Um, Pokemon Picross is okay. I'm not the biggest fan. So, we're gonna take that aspect and put, like, RPG elements in it. And at first I was thinking, oh yeah, RPG and Picross, two things I really like. What could go wrong? Honestly, it kind of fails on both ends. It's a Picross game. It's not really super punishing for if you make mistakes, because the game's like, oh yeah, well, if you make mistakes, we'll just, like, fix it in for you or whatever. So as far as, like, being like, oh, what did I do wrong? Maybe I'll fix what? No, you can't really do that, because the game already does it. And as far as an RPG is concerned, it's not really an RPG. It's just time-based. It's like... It kind of fails on both regards. It's not fun as a Picross game, and it's not fun as an RPG. And at the end of the game, at the end of the day, if you want to play a Picross game, just play a Jupiter Picross game or something else. I would not recommend this game at all. It's like, it it doesn't, it, I honestly, if you want an RPG Picross game, I think you're better off actually playing Pokemon Picross, honestly. I think that it has better RPG elements than this. Uh, so as a, as a Picross fan, it's a no from me. 
Man, it only takes a few seconds to look at this game and see how I got baited by it. This is Magic Cat. It is a game about cats, which I like. And it's cute, and it's a platformer. And I'm like, okay, we'll be in there. And in the very beginning, it was pretty fun. And honestly, by the end of it, I was more than happy to be done with the game, it turns out. The game, it kind of like... There's, there's just some weird things where like there's mechanics in the game but the game encourages you not to use mechanics but it does encourage you to use the mechanics as a time trial but the time trial is separate and there's just some like i don't know the level design in the game really was the big issue for me it was like yeah 63 stages my ass the, end, the middle and the ending of this game was pretty suffering as far as some of the ridiculous like uh, level design and the game says there's like a lot of boss fights in it but all the boss fights are like pretty much the same except with additional stupidity like hazards and things like that and overall it's just like a big grind and hassle it turns out it's, it's the, the the design of the game towards the end really really falters and falls off it's sucky so this game actually was a really big disappointment for me it turns out this is widget satchel i've had this game on with this for a while now and i've played it and I'm just, it just doesn't really deliver in anything it turns out it's like oh yeah i'm gonna be like a platformer but the platforming elements are really whack and controls kind of suck a lot and like it feels really janky to move and jump and stuff like that oh we're gonna be like a chaos game where you know where you do a of stuff but there's actually not that much chaos to be had you kind of just whack at stuff and it's not like super interesting there's not much interaction with anything it just like it kind of just fails in a lot of different regards it just doesn't it's like you collect stuff but the game is super pin you collect stuff and it's cool and you could you can make things but the game is super punishing if you like get hit while collecting stuff so you actually can't make anything that you want to make it's like i don't know it doesn't it's just not fun to control in anything honestly i i, I think honestly you just really missed the mark for what i wanted to do all right welcome to the bottom barrel cesspool you know that we've reached this point we've reached the point of this video where i discover as much as i talk about how much i love video games i've discovered the part where I hate modern gaming a lot. This is Monster Hunter World, and I've already talked about how much I like Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, and I'm a pretty big fan of the series in general. I've played like, I don't know, three Ultimate, and four Ultimate, and Gen, and Gen Ultimate separately actually, for like close to 500 to 600 hours um, each, and I've played this game for more time than I'd like to admit, honestly, at this point. <laughs> honestly, mostly, <laughs> what ends up happening, we flip. I'm only playing this game because it's like a meme game between me and my friends at this point, because of how fucking bad it is. Holy hell. Um, this, uh, I have a blind playthrough of this on my channel because I got, uh, well, people wanted me to play it, and uh, I have plenty of suffering happening there. This game just. <sighs> Big sigh, honestly. Uh, as far as tick, uh, a lot of the parts that are fun about Monster Hunter, and we'll just get rid of them. But we'll add in a lot of like cool modern game features instead. <laughs> That's cool. I love shiny buns and voice acting and plot, but it's not plot. And uh, there's a lot of now. Admittedly, the game isn't all bad. A lot of the control improvements are actually really nice. That's the best part, which is really funny to say because not only does this game control better than also other Monster Hunter games, it also controls worse than other Monster Hunter games. It turns out, like this game is just—it doesn't know what it—it it doesn't know what it wants to be, man. It's all over the place. There's a lot of design aspects that really suck about the game, with the interface, the gameplay. Um, everything just feels super half-assed, frankly. Like all the ideas they had, they didn't fully commit with any of the ideas that they had with the game. Um, you probably already heard a lot of my complaints about the game already, um, if you watched me play it on my channel. Um, so, yeah. But I only really play the game still, because like I said, it's kind of a meme at this point between me and my friends. And, yeah, that's gonna continue with Iceborne. So, haha, <laughs> when I make this video again next year, watch out for Iceborne on the list. It's gonna be somewhere. Probably at the bottom. I hope it's not at the bottom, because I want to like Moss Hunter. And the award for biggest dookie of the year goes to... <laughs> It's not gonna be any other game, dude. It's gotta be this game. It's fucking Kingdom Hearts 3. 
I did not want to play this game. I did not. I did not want to play this game. But my brother's like, yeah, I really want to watch you play this game and see what you think about it. You know, I like the game a lot. And I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. I'll play Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, so I really like Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, actually. I, what, gameplay in 1 is kind of like whatever to me. But as far as like overall like plot, you're like, yeah, this is like simple, but it's cohesive plot about light and darkness. It's very Disney-y. You know, it's cool. Um, two, the plot, you know, the Kingdom Hearts plot has kind of gone off the deep rails, we already, we already know about that part, Let, let's be real here. Um, but two's gameplay is so fucking good that I gloss over all the rest of it, you know. Let me tell you, if I, if I can play the game and I just skip all the cutscenes, Kingdom Hearts 2, 10 out of 10 game. If you have to watch the cutscenes, it becomes like a 7 out of 10 game, frankly. But, yeah, Kingdom Hearts 3, with the progression of the rest of the series that Kingdom Hearts has been through, it really has culminated into this mess of... <sighs> Let's talk about the plot. The plot is... Suck. It's so bad. We... I'm... You know, I know they want to make more Kingdom Hearts games in the future. And thank fuck we'll be off of this plot. Hopefully. You know, this whole arc is supposed to be over. But this plot at this point is like, no one gives a fuck. No one cares. It's so, like, convoluted and... Cryptic, like the bad kind of cryptic, and probably contradictory at this point. And the gameplay itself is just filled with shiny buttons, and like you build all these resources, but you, there's no like strategy in how you use a lot of the resources, frankly, because you have all these meters, but you can save like Keyblade forms, and that's cool, and all that. But like, you're just like, oh, I feel meters, oh, I use the meters, you know, it just feels like you took a phone game and you made it, like a, a flashy phone game, that's how it feels like, it's like, there, you feel like you're doing gameplay, but there's not actually gameplay, and there's so many, there, there are a lot of times where they're like, legitimately like, cool ideas, but the execution sucks, controlling Sora a lot of times feels wonky, I blame the fact that you like, automatically go over ledges and things like that, it's like, super uncontrollable, the gameplay is super unbalanced, as far as what options are good and bad so expressing yourself is not really all that cool and honestly it doesn't feel like a very cool finale game actually as far as a finale to like an era or whatever it just feels like another kingdom Hearts game like this could have just been like on like handheld this could have been like a bbs or a 3d or whatever it's like eh honestly it's it sucks and it's I don't know. There's like obvious fan service in the game, by the way. It's, it's like gross, and I think a lot of people, all that stuff like makes people like the game. And if you like the game, sure, cool or not, but like, yeah, Kingdom Hearts 3 is uh, really just. W w w yeah, I'm the same Sora. God fucking damn it. So yeah, that's uh, it for my. Uh, games of the year that were memorable, both in good ways and bad. Hope you enjoyed the list. Like I said, these aren't really like reviews of the game. They're not super in-depth. I don't think I fully like captured or my opinions of the game through it. Just like a simple run through of the game just for, you know, talking sake. Hope you enjoyed the video. I don't know if I said that already. Um, 2019, I think was a pretty good year for video games, honestly, for me. A lot of these games I quite enjoyed. Like I said, I found some of my new favorite games of the year of the list and we'll see what uh 2020 has in store for us now that i'm keeping track of this game's list more which i think was a pretty good idea for me um yeah bye